Cell damage is a condition affecting cells and their ability to adapt to a harmful stimulus, leading to cell deterioration. As we will see, cell damage may also result in cell death. So, let's start by talking about ATP depletion, one of the most basic forms of cell damage. Cell loss of ATP inevitably leads to the block of cellular processes. Remember that cells store energy in the form of ATP, adenosine triphosphate. ATP forms from oxidative phosphorylation and glycolysis, and is used for protein synthesis processes and transport through membrane as well as for synthesis of structural molecules. But how can ATP be depleted? ATP depletion occurs due to phenomena where ATP production through oxidative phosphorylation and or glycolysis is impossible. Hypoxia and some other toxic substances are, for example, capable of reducing the cell's ability to phosphorylate, thus reducing the amount of ATP that the cell can produce in this way. During hypoxia, there is a lack of oxygen and, therefore, there is no terminal electron acceptor and ATP cannot be produced in the mitochondria. Instead, during chemical toxic damage, there is a block in the mitochondrial function only in case of toxicants interacting directly with the respiratory complex, as for example in the case of cyanide. Ischemia is different from hypoxia. In fact, while with hypoxia cells receive less oxygen, in case of ischemia there is no blood supply at all. This means that the cell will not be able to obtain oxygen, other nutrients, nor will they release waste into the blood circulation. In case of ischemia there is in fact a lack of every type of nutrient, among which glucose and consequently glycolysis stands still too. But what are the consequences of ATP depletion? ATP depletion obviously blocks a large number of processes maintaining the cell active, among which protein folding. It is not rare, in fact, to see misfolded proteins. To synthesize proteins, a great number of energy is needed. So, when energy isn't enough, ribosomes detach themselves from the mRNA strands and the synthesized protein will misfold and in most cases only partially. For this reason, chaperonins, systems of protein recovery that refold proteins, will come into action. But chaperonins are produced only in extreme conditions and, as we will see, their response is limited. At the same time, membrane pumps lower their activity. This is the case of the sodium-potassium pump one of the most important pumps that contributes in such a peculiar way to maintaining the electrosmotic homeostasis of a cell. The mechanism that makes it possible is the rocking banana, opening first towards the inside and then towards the outside. The sodium-potassium pump works in this way. Normally, sodium and potassium concentrate in and outside the cell in a different way. The sodium-potassium pump binds three molecules of sodium in the first phase of its cycle intracellularly. This leads to a conformational change of the molecule, allowing a phosphate bond with an ATP on one side. This mechanism causes a more significant conformational change, which modifies the outward direction of the opening protein. However, in this form, the protein completely loses affinity for the amount of sodium that is released while gaining a lot of affinity for potassium. Potassium binding induces the detachment of the phosphate group. With no phosphate group, the protein returns to its original form by opening inward and losing its affinity for potassium while gaining that for sodium and ending the cycle. Without ATP, the sodium-potassium pump cannot work, leading to an osmotic imbalance between the inside and the outside of the cell, and this causes cell swelling. Moreover, a great amount of salt remains inside the cell, attracting a lot of water. Cell swelling is a phenomenon indicating cell damage that can be observed not only in the cytoplasmatic membrane and therefore in the entire cell, but also in organelles. This is due to the fact that pumps like the sodium-potassium one maintain the electrosmotic homeostasis of mitochondria and this results in the swelling of mitochondria during damage from ATP depletion. Besides the sodium-potassium pump, the calcium pump loses its activity as well. 
The calcium pump normally plays a key role since calcium must be present in very small amounts inside the cell. There is in fact a very strong gradient carrying the calcium inside the cell. Concentration inside the cell is usually equal to 2.4 millimolar and 0.0001 millimolar inside. The calcium pump acts against this gradient and, by consuming ATP, carries two calcium ions per cycle outside. In this way, the gradient is maintained since calcium tends to enter spontaneously. In the event of calcium pump malfunctioning, without ATP, the intracellular calcium will dramatically increase and, as we're going to see in a little while, will cause severe damage. During ATP depletion, another phenomenon that can be observed is that of anaerobic glycolysis, which increases out of proportion. In case of hypoxia, in fact, neither gathering energy from the outside nor carrying out oxidative phosphorylation are possible while, in case of ischemia, glucose supply is impossible as well. So, the cell will do the only possible thing to carry on glycolysis, that is to say, breaking polymers of glycogen down into glucose monomers. This phenomenon is called glycogenolysis. Despite helping for some minutes, the result of glycogenesis is even worse. Glycolysis leads, in fact, to pyruvate formation, releasing two molecules of ATP for each molecule of glucose. But, with hypoxia, pyruvate converts to lactic acid, forming two other molecules of ATP, which is a great advantage. As the name suggests, acyl lactic is an acid, acidifying the cytoplasm and leading to a malfunction of a number of enzymes that can only work properly if the pH of the cytoplasm remains constant. The last consequence of ATP depletion is that of the ribosome detachment, about which we've already talked a little. As we saw earlier, protein synthesis is a process requiring a lot of energy. The ribosome itself, by binding the surface of the wrinkled endoplasmatic reticulum and the mRNA, requires energy. During depletion, ribosomes will attach, and as a consequence, protein synthesis and lipids in the cytoplasm will decrease due to the lack of upper proteins that would normally complex lipids. At the same time, phospholipids won't be synthesized since there are no enzymes to do that. Enzymes are proteins and will therefore damage the membrane. Thank you for watching. This video was created by School of Biomedical Sciences Agora. We hope you enjoyed it. If you're curious or have any doubt or question, please feel free to leave a comment below. If you want to find out more about us or want to support our project, click on the following link to visit our website.